On my daily quiz questions, I've asked a number of questions about this topology. This topology consists of five switches, switch one, switch two, three, four, and five, with various priorities and MAC addresses. And I've asked questions like, which switch will be the root switch? Which ports in this topology will be root ports? Which ports will block and so forth? So let's work through this topology and see how it works practically. What I've also done is build this topology in GNS3 and I've set the MAC addresses of the switches and the priorities of the switches. I've done no other configuration. So as an example, on switch one, show spanning tree shows me the bridge ID of the local switch, which is 0020 quadruple one quadruple one over there. And we can see already which port is the root port and which ports are designated ports on the switch. Now, in GNS3, interfaces such as these are shown as forwarding, but they're not actually connected in the topology. Those interfaces can be ignored in our topology. But let's work it out. So first decision is which switch is gonna be the root switch in this topology. And what I would say is let's write root here and I'll set the font to let's say green because there's a root switch. And I'll choose a darker green here. And I'll make this 36 as a size so we can see what's going on. Okay, so which switch is the root? The first decision is priorities. So look at the priorities these switches here have the lowest priority. So we need to look at switch two, switch four, and switch five because they have the lowest priority. Those priorities are equal, so we need to make a decision based on MAC address. This MAC address is higher than this MAC address, which is higher than this MAC address. So I would say that this switch is the root switch. Let's have a look at this practically though. So let's see what's actually happening in the network. Here's switch two. On switch two, show spanning tree. What you'll notice is this switch is the root. Bridge ID is the same as the spanning tree address. In other words, this is the root of the spanning tree. Now, the next decision is the devices need to decide their root ports. So on switch one, which is its best port to use to get to the root bridge? This is its best port to use to get to the root bridge. On switch three, this is its best port to use to get to the root bridge. Look at this as the best path or the link with the lowest path cost to the root bridge. Interface speeds are the same here, so it's quicker to go this way, let's say with a cost of one. It's not actually a one. If we look at that switch, we can see the path costs, but you can see the cost is actually four. So let's say cost of four, this is a cost of four plus four plus four, so 12, it's quicker to go this way. On switch four, this is gonna be its root port, cost of four is gonna be quicker than four plus four plus four. So that's its root port. On Switch five, a little bit more complicated. This path cost is the same as this path cost. So that can't be used as the determining factor. So we look at the neighbor bridge ID. Which neighbor has the lowest bridge ID? Notice this priority is lower than this priority. Even though the MAC address is higher, the priority is lower. So this is gonna be the root port. But let's confirm that. So start with switch one. Show spanning tree. Switch one's root port is gigabit zero zero. That's the only port, so that's quite easy. What about switch three? So on switch three, I said this is going to be the root port, and notice that's what we see in the output. Just to confirm that, switch three, show spanning tree. Notice root port is gigabit zero one. This has the best path cost or lowest path cost. On switch four, show spanning tree. Notice root port is gigabit zero one per the diagram. 
That has the lowest path cost and the difficult one is switch five. So on switch five, show spanning tree, show spanning tree rather, notice the root port is gigabit zero one. As I explained, path costs are the same. So you look at the neighbor bridge ID and see which one is the lowest. This is the lowest bridge ID. On every link now, we need to choose designated ports. The easiest way to think of that is imagine that you had a PC on each connection. So just imagine that we had a little PC on this cable. Now there's obviously no PC in the topology, but if we had a PC on this link, would this be the quickest path to the root bridge or would this be the quickest path to the root bridge? So just imagine that you've got a PC in the middle of the link. I think it's quite obvious that this is gonna be the designated port. It's quicker for this PC to send traffic to the root bridge this way rather than this way. On this link, just imagine the PC there in the middle. Quickest way to get to the root bridge is that way. Now on this link, what's the quickest way? This is half a link, so cost of let's say two. This has got a cost of four, so that's a cost of six to get to the root bridge. This way would be two, four plus four would be 10. If you're not sure about where I'm getting those figures, notice I'm looking at the path costs. In this example, I'm using PVST or per VLAN spanning tree. The cost of each link is four. So if you look at switch three as an example, the cost of the link to the root bridge is four. If you wanna keep the maths simple or math simple if you prefer, just think of this as one link, another link, so that's two. This is half a link, so it's two and a half. So two and a half that way or one and a half this way or actual costs four plus two is six, because it's half a link. This would be cost of four plus four is eight, plus two is 10. So this is gonna be the designated port. Now on this link, what's the quickest way to get to the root bridge? Is it this way or is it this way? Cost of four, cost of four is eight, plus two is 10. This is gonna be a quicker way to get to the root bridge. So that Ubuntu PC doesn't exist. It's just a way to explain how things work. Now on the root bridge, all ports are gonna be designated ports because you can't get closer to the root bridge than the root bridge itself. So show spanning tree shows us that all ports are designated. On switch four, let's check what switch four does. Notice gigabit zero zero, not in our topology, but gigabit zero two, this is the designated port. So that's correct. What about switch three? So on switch three, show spanning tree. Notice designated port is gigabit zero zero. That's not in our topology, but notice gigabit zero two is a designated port. So this is the designated port in the topology. If you were ever unsure about that, about the links in GNS3, just use show CDP neighbors to see your neighbors. So as an example, I can see that on switch three, switch two is connected via my local interface to gigabit zero one on switch two. Switch five is connected via gigabit zero two on the local switch to gigabit zero two on switch five. So that'll show you which actual interfaces are in use. Show spanning tree will allow us to see which ports are forwarding and the state of those ports. So this is a designated port. So the last port is a blocking port. This would be the blocking port in the topology. So I'll change the color of the text to let's say red and click okay. So reddish color, that is a blocking port. We can confirm that on the switch, show spanning tree. Notice this port is called an alternate port. That's actually the term that we use with rapid spanning tree or rapid PVST plus. Cisco have used that term here for PVST. So it's an alternate port. That's the role status is it's blocking. So that's a blocking port. So there you go. That's the answer to various quiz questions. This is the root switch. Here are the root ports in the topology. We've got designated ports and this is the blocking port in the topology. So I hope you found that useful. If you enjoyed this video, 
please like it, that really helps me. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, which really does help me. I'm David Bombal, and I want to wish you all the very best. Music